In the introduction of Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility, readers meet the widowed Mrs. Dashwood and her three daughters, Eleanor, Marianne, and Margaret. After the death of their father, Henry Dashwood, the girls are forced to leave their home at Norland Park, which is now the inheritance of Henry's son, their half-brother John. Despite John's promise to care for his stepmother and half-sisters, his greedy wife Fanny manipulates him into providing the least financial support possible. Eleanor is sad to leave the company of Fanny's shy brother Edward, for whom she has feelings. In the rising action, Sir John Middleton, a wealthy relation, provides a cottage for the Dashwoods on his estate, Barton Park. There, the Dashwood sisters meet Sir John's friends, including Colonel Brandon, an older gentleman in his 30s. Brandon falls in love with Marianne, but Marianne is more interested in a charming young bachelor, John Willoughby. They act like they're engaged until Willoughby leaves suddenly and breaks off contact, perplexing Eleanor and breaking Marianne's heart. Lucy Steele confides to Eleanor that she and Edward have been secretly engaged for several years. <gasps> this shocks Eleanor and makes her pity Edward. She reasons that he agreed to the engagement while young and naive and now likely regrets it. Mrs. Jennings, the mother of Sir John's wife, Lady Middleton, invites Marianne and Eleanor to spend the winter with her in London. Eleanor's relieved to escape the Steele sisters, while Marianne hopes to see Willoughby and get answers about his disappearance. At a party, the sisters see Willoughby with another young woman. He treats Marianne coldly. Soon, they're all shocked to learn of Willoughby's marriage to Miss Gray, an heiress. Colonel Brandon divulges Willoughby's sordid past to Eleanor. Willoughby's a known seducer of women. He left Colonel Brandon's ward, Eliza, pregnant and ruined shortly before turning his attentions to Marianne. Meanwhile, Fanny becomes enraged to learn of Lucy's and Edward's engagement and Mrs. Ferrers, Edward's mother, disowns him and cuts off his inheritance. Colonel Brandon offers him the position of vicar at Delaford, Brandon's estate. Eleanor and Marianne, both heartbroken but for different reasons, visit the Palmers in Cleveland. There, Marianne falls ill. Willoughby shows up and confesses all to Eleanor. He chose to marry a wealthy woman after his aunt cut off his inheritance. In the climax of the novel, Edward visits the Dashwoods and reveals that Lucy ended their engagement to marry his younger brother, Robert. Now free to marry Eleanor, Edward proposes, and the couple takes up residence at Delaford. In the falling action, Edward reconciles with his mother and earns back his inheritance. Eleanor and Edward marry and live happily ever after in Delaford. In the resolution, Marianne comes to love Colonel Brandon. They marry, and soon both sisters are living at Delaford, safe and comfortable in their homes and matched with appropriate husbands, just in time for their little sister Margaret to begin thinking of marriage. Five central characters structure the plot of Jane Austen's novel, Sense and Sensibility. Eleanor Dashwood is one of the two sisters at the heart of the novel. Her marriage to Edward is the novel's happy ending. Eleanor's measured approach to life embodies the sense of the novel's title and contrasts with the impassioned sensibility of her sister Marianne. Through the course of the novel, Eleanor learns the limits of reason, developing a balance between reason and emotion, propriety and expressiveness. Marianne Dashwood is musically talented, beautiful and lively. Her character embodies sensibility, passion, emotion, and drama, in contrast to her sister's calmer, more reasoned and restrained approach to life. Marianne loves but can't quite understand these aspects of Eleanor, and she throws herself into events, expecting a fairy tale ending to her love affair with Willoughby. Bitter experience forces Marianne to leaven her sensibility with a pinch of Eleanor's sense, preparing her by novel's end to recognize and return the older Colonel Brandon's love for her. Edward Ferrers, brother of Fanny Ferrers Dashwood and Robert Ferrers, doesn't fit in with his family. Fanny, Robert, and their mother, Mrs. Ferrers, value wealth, status, and reputation. Edward, in contrast, values education and good conversation. Shy and modest, Edward likes solitude and aspires to become a clergyman. He's also loyal to a fault, keeping a promise to Lucy by staying secretly engaged to her, which nearly costs him his marriage to Eleanor. Colonel Brandon earns the description an officer and a gentleman. In his mid-30s, he's seen enough of the world to be alert to manipulation, scandal, and lies. Yet he's also a good judge of character, 
and knows worthy traits when he sees them. Boundlessly capable and compassionate, Colonel Brandon wins Eleanor's admiration, Edward's friendship, and at the end of the novel, Marianne's love, as he works behind the scenes to undo the damage caused by more selfish characters. John Willoughby is the scoundrel of sense and sensibility. Handsome and charming, Willoughby uses the people in his life to meet his own ends, especially for pleasure and leisure. He relies idly on the promise of an inheritance, squanders his wealthy aunt's trust in him, and seduces then abandons Colonel Brandon's ward, Eliza. Willoughby changes to a degree when he courts Marianne, but he chooses wealth over his love for her. When he seems to realize that his love for Marianne might have made him a better man, it's too little too late, but still earns Eleanor's sympathy. Homes, tokens of women's affection, and money are some of the symbols in Jane Austen's novel Sense and Sensibility. Austen's novel focuses exclusively on the concerns and lifestyles of wealthy, landed English families. And landed wealth, the named estates and homes associated with specific families, is a consistent symbol of class privilege and income. Permanent homes are the mark of the most prominent characters in Sense and Sensibility. Norland Park of John and Fanny Dashwood, Barton Park of the Middletons, and Delaford of Colonel Brandon. Among this class of wealth, many families have inherited both a country estate and a London residence. The absence of permanent landed wealth is a mark of misfortune in Austen's novel, and we meet the Dashwood women at a time when their estate is insecure and their fortunes shifting. We ought to note the gendered power of landed wealth and the importance of marriage in securing it. John Willoughby loses then regains an estate, depending on his compliance with his aunt's wishes. When Edward Ferrers refuses to comply with his mother's wishes, he's disowned. The security of a home is often unsure for unmarried or widowed women. Once widowed, Mrs. Dashwood is displaced from Norland Park and forced to rely on Sir John's kindness, her daughter's futures more precarious. Lucy's manipulations of Robert are driven by her need for a home, and Marianne dreams of being mistress of Willoughby's future estate. Locks of women's hair and personal letters are tokens of a woman's affection that play an important symbolic role in the romances of Sense and Sensibility. A gift of hair was such an intimate one that a young man's acceptance was a tacit promise of love. A young woman's letters were also considered intimate gifts and implied a close and loving relationship. Because these tokens of affection carried such meaning, they could also endanger a young woman's reputation if they fell into the wrong hands or were publicly displayed. They were forms of expression that had the potential for serious backlash. Moreover, rejection of these tokens meant heartbreak and loss. Lucy's lock of hair complicates Eleanor's feelings for Edward and misleads other characters. And Willoughby accepts a lock of Marianne's hair, which leads Eleanor to assume they're secretly engaged. Marianne's love letters to Willoughby cause them both embarrassment. Money in Sense and Sensibility punctuates countless discussions, preoccupations, schemings, and liaisons. Sufficient income means stability in this novel, and concerns about income and estate seem to motivate many characters' actions. While the title encourages us to focus on human intellect and passion, money looms prominently throughout, and concerns of a woman's marketability and marriages of fortune threaten to undermine the romances at the heart of the novel. Head and heart, trust and truth, sibling relationships and working the system are some of the themes of Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. The novel's title gives us the theme of head and heart. Which should determine how people think, act, and speak? Reason or emotion? Restraint or passion? Modesty or desire? Eleanor is the model of sense and Marianne of sensibility. The novel suggests that neither extreme in and of itself leads to happiness. For example, Eleanor and Edward are sensible young people who, by obeying the dictates of reason, honor, and social expectation, nearly abandon their genuine affection for each other. Conversely, Marianne and Willoughby, infatuated with romance and pleasure, damage their happiness, and in Willoughby's case, other people's lives, by rejecting restraint. In each case, 
balance is required to arrive at the novel's happy ending. Trust and truth speak to the novel's plot, which turns unpredictably because so many characters are constantly keeping secrets, hiding their histories, or misrepresenting their feelings. Some characters conceal their thoughts for commendable reasons. Eleanor, for example, works hard not to upset others and to keep the secrets entrusted to her, and her reluctance to express her true feelings for Edward is dictated by her sense of propriety. But by not admitting her feelings, she seems to perpetually deny her own happiness. Willoughby's lack of transparency is rooted in his desire to escape the consequences of his actions. Because Marianne's heart is so open, naive, and easily swayed by the charm and a handsome smile, she trusts mm. Willoughby, and he plays his part so well that Mrs. Dashwood and even Eleanor are fooled. <clears throat> Characters rely on rumors, misunderstandings, and assumptions based on appearances. The novel provides mm. ample opportunity to examine how such misreadings affect interpersonal relationships. Jane Austen explores the contrasts in sibling relationships. Not only are Eleanor and Marianne different, but other siblings display even greater differences. The open, friendly, generous Mrs. Palmer could hardly be more different from her chilly, greedy sister, <laughs> Lady Middleton. Edward Ferrers is reserved, honorable, and self-sacrificing, while his brother Robert is extroverted, self-centered, and superficial. But Eleanor and Marianne also share a similarity. They're both kind and honest, and they recognize and admire strengths in one another, and ultimately join head and heart. The Steele sisters also share common qualities, pettiness, and a certain degree of viciousness, qualities that do not allow them to grow and mature. Working the system is a theme that sees the women in Sense and Sensibility inhabit a world that, like Jane Austen's real world, offered women few chances for autonomy and self-determination. With a few exceptions, the women in the novel are at the mercy of fathers, brothers, sons, and husbands. Women of the landed gentry had almost no respectable alternatives for generating income and little say in their futures. Austin's characters, although a match for the men in terms of intelligence, desire, and ambition, must learn to work the system, sometimes manipulating it through the men in their lives. 